Hello everyone, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio broadcast. I wanted to bring to your attention that the federal government that has been involved in many court cases right now, whether it be in Nevada or whether it be in Oregon, against the people who have been standing up and protesting against the federal government's land grabs and against their unlawful activities are now trying to play another card. So what I wanted to report to you, and this was reported on the 12th, and um, if you remember the attorney Marcus Mumford. Marcus Mumford was the attorney that helped Ammon Bundy in his case in Oregon. And Ammon Bundy, as well as the rest of the defendants in those cases on October 27, 2016, were found not guilty by the jury. Well, now come before us, the chief judge moves to prevent Marcus Mumford from practicing in federal court in Oregon. And this was posted on April the 12th, 2017 on ItMattersHowYouStand.com. Why is this important? It's important on very, on a lot of levels. But I'm going to read to you what is being reported on this. And then I'm going to remind you of exactly why they really do not want him in that courtroom. First of all, I would like to say I have to give a kudos to um, Marcus Mumford because he surpassed doing his job for standing up for his defendants and this is one of the reasons the not guilty uh, plea I mean the finding of the not guilty situation with the jury so there remember that gentleman's face he actually fought for his clients and uh, he has earned my respect so attorney Marcus Mumford of Utah was given what's called a pro hack vice admission to practice and represent Ammon Bundy in federal court in Oregon during a five week trial last fall. Now Oregon's chief U.S. J District Judge Michael W. Mossman is moving to revoke Mumford's authority to practice in federal court anywhere in Oregon, citing his behavior during the Bundy trial. Mumford has until May the 4th to challenge the action in writing. Now that was of course according to the Oregonian. So before I go any further I want to make something known noting that the Oregonians trying citing his behavior. Let's talk about his behavior. His behavior was he was representing his clients. Let's do a little bit of a flashback to October 27th of 2016. Here is Marcus Mumford right here. There were many witnesses in the courtroom that day and this is what was reported as well as eyewitness testimony. It was not Marcus Mumford that was actually out of line. It was the U.S. Marshals as well as the federal court. So it stated, Portland, Oregon, Ammon Bundy's attorney was tackled by U.S. Marshals during the heated argument with the judge after his client was acquitted on all counts Thursday afternoon. After the verdict was read, attorney Marcus Mumford argued that Bundy was free to go. Mumford was yelling that his client was free to go. Quote, he said you're not taking this man because you have no jurisdiction over him. He's been found not guilty on all charges and they attacked Mumford. Unquote. That's what defendant Shauna Cox stated. At that point, several marshals tackled Mumford, stunned him with a taser and took him into custody. I just turned to the marshals and said, show me what papers you have. Then the next thing I know, they surrounded me, took a hold of me, and they were talking about I was resisting arrest. Mumford said they twisted my legs, put me on the ground, and then tased me. There was like eight of them on him, and they tased him, Cox said. It's unreal. How can they do that? This is not justice, unquote. Mumford was released from custody about two hours later. Ammon Bundy and his brother, Ryan, will remain in custody because they are still facing charges in Nevada stemming from a high-profile 2014 standoff with federal agents trying to round up their father Clive and Bundy's cattle. So aside from the situation on how the Oregonian really wanted to spin this, the fact of the matter is the U.S. Marshals could not produce the paperwork proving that they had jurisdiction. The second point of the matter is laptops were flying and everything else was going on 
And that's really what happened. They did not like the fact that Marcus Mumford, after Ammon Bundy had been found not guilty on all charges, they did not like the fact that the attorney stood up for his client's rights because he had been found not guilty, so he should have been released. The U.S. Marshals did not have a hold order. They could not produce a hold order, and that is why the attorney said, you have no jurisdiction. If they can't prove they have jurisdiction, then they should not be able to hold them. So now back to the current thing that is going on. And this is according to the Oregonian and Oregon Live uh, as of April the 12th. Attorney Marcus Mumford, who last month had criminal charges dismissed against him, stemming from his arrest on the day his client, M. M. Bundy, was acquitted of conspiracy in federal court in Portland, now faces more legal challenges. Oregon's chief U.S. District Judge Michael Mossman is seeking to revoke Mumford's ability to practice law in any federal court in the District of Oregon, which is a rare move. The judge has given Mumford until May the 4th to argue in writing why he should not impose such a sanction. In a court filing Wednesday, Mossman cited Mumford's repeated failures or refusals to observe court rulings in the Bundy trial last fall, repeated instances of Mumford arguing with the judge with a raised voice and sometimes in the jury's presence. In a inappropriate commentary on a witness in the presence of a jury, his arguing for Bundy's release from trial after his acquittal without a good faith basis to believe that the pre-existing custody order from Nevada was not still in effect and his yelling at the court when he objected to the trial judge's rulings. Now don't you notice how they just love to spin it and try to make it sound as if it was Mumford who was in the wrong, but the reality is they didn't have the paperwork and, and he did everything necessary to defend his client, which is what his job was. Continuing, Bundy was transferred to Nevada jail after his acquittal in Oregon. He awaits trial there on federal charges stemming from the 2014 armed standoff with federal land officers near his father Clive and Bundy's ranch in Bunkerville, Nevada. Mossman also alleged that Mumford failed to timely disclose to the trial judge that Rick Cober, who served as part of Bundy's defense team, was also a client of Mumford's in an unrelated criminal proceeding. In 2014, a federal judge in Utah tossed out 18 charges against Korber that had alleged he operated a giant Ponzi scheme through his real estate company, but Korber was recently re-indicted on the 18 charges in January. The judge filed 25 exhibits with his order, mostly transcripts from the Bundy's trial to support his move to revoke Mumford's admission to practice in federal court in Oregon. My initial reaction is, quote, the empire strikes back, unquote, Mumford said in an email on Wednesday. Quote, I know of no court order that I violated and no reason to impose some kind of lifetime ban to practice law in Oregon, unquote. Mumford was arrested on the last day of Bundy's trial after the verdicts were announced in court. U.S. Marshals tackled, Mum tackled Mumford to the floor, stunned him with a taser gun, and arrested him after he repeatedly questioned the court about what authority the Marshals had to keep Bundy in custody after his acquittal in the federal conspiracy case stemming from the armed takeover, the Mal Hur National Wildlife Refuge. Now, before I go any further, it was not an armed takeover of the refuge. It was an empty building in the middle of nowhere. People were armed, yes, but it wasn't an armed takeover. These people are so melodramatic, it drives me nuts. <sighs> Continuing, Mumford was charged with failing to comply with official signs that prohibit the disruption of federal officers, official work, and failing to comply with federal officers' direction to stop resisting and to place his hands behind his back. A trial had been set for April the 13th. Mumford's lawyer, Michael Levine, had argued repeatedly that the deputy U.S. Marshals engaged in outrageous misconduct and requested any emails or text messages between Marshals about Mumford as part of discovery and preparation for trial. In mid-March, a specially assigned federal judge from Washington dismissed all of the criminal charges against Mumford at the prosecution's request. 
Mumford also came under scrutiny during the five-week trial in U.S. District Judge Anna J. Brown's court. During trial, she had threatened to find Mumford in contempt of court, but never followed through. Brown's admonition to Mumford in late September came after she said Mumford appeared to be defying her order not to delve into the circumstances surrounding the police's fatal shooting of the refuge occupation spokesman Robert Lavoie Fenicum. Brown also had repeatedly ordered Mumford during trial to restrict his questions during cross-examination to the testimony elicited during prosecutor's direct examination of witnesses. The trial judge also frequently sustained prosecutor's objections to Mumford's lines of questioning because they were either irrelevant or, quote, beyond the scope, unquote, of direct testimony. If Mossman does revoke Mumford's ability to practice in any Oregon federal court, the judge will disclose the sanction to any state bar under which Mumford currently practices law, and Mumford will be required to disclose such a sanction when applying to practice in any federal court in the future. Quote, for Judge Mossman to be the one who issues the order is especially disappointing because I specifically asked him to intercede on my behalf as a voice of reason in dealing with the marshals. Misbegotten prosecution. But he responded to say that he was recusing himself. It's as if he is now saying his recusals are selective, Mumford wrote in his email. And that was reported by Maxine Bernstein from the Oregonian and Oregonian Live. So, what you need to remember, the reason they do not want this man in their court is because he actually fights for his clients. He does believe that your client has a right to fully defend themselves and that evidence on their behalf should be able to be known to the jury. Huh. Sounds like that there's at least one attorney, at least one, that's willing to fight for your unalienable rights. Thank you, Mr. Munford, for what you are doing. Thank you for standing up for unalienable rights of every person. And I want to say you have earned my respect. And it is, of course, no surprise that the federal system is trying it's darndest to get anyone and everyone that will stand up for unalienable rights out of that courtroom because you know there's some that just can't be bought okay if you like this information please share thumbs up thank you God bless you as always watch your backs check your facts Semper Fidelis and good night